What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Serious Angler podcast, episode number 141. We are joined today by Mr. Luke Palmer. What's going on, Andy? Not too much. Just texting uh, Mike Schnupp back real fast. I apologize. <laughs> yeah, no, we got some cool stuff going on next week. Um, I just learned about maybe 30 minutes ago. That's going to be yeah. pretty exciting. But uh, some deal. other cool stuff next week, dude. On Monday. Monday, Monday, Monday Night Lives are now on, obviously, YouTube, obviously on the Sears Angler YouTube channel, which if you're watching this right now, obviously you're already on it. It's also live on the Facebook page, Sears Angler Facebook page. And Monday we'll be giving away an angler button, angler the bullseye. First one. first one. So every month at first Monday Night Live, uh, each month moving forward, we're going to give away an angler bullseye. So make sure you guys stay tuned for those. Uh, head over to the Instagram page. We'll link it down below so you guys can go enter it. But uh, fun podcast tonight, dude. I'm looking forward to talking to Luke here. How about yourself? Oh, yeah. Oh, let's, let's, not, let's not wait any longer. Let's get him on here. What's going on, Luke? Hey, guys. How's it going? Good. Going good. How Have was, a good uh, day. How, he has to say, how was your day on the farm? <laughs> well, let's start out here at the hardware store. Uh, you know, we op- I still work 8 to 5 when I'm home. You know, I don't get to... And then we get off work, and Dad, he runs around 100 to 120 cows. So get off work and go feed cows, put out hay, you name it, you know, fixed fence, whatever. You got to do it. So it's part of life and, I guess, part of the Elite Series fun, you know. Yeah. I was going to say, you're like you're like part Elite Series, part like Colt Bennett from the ranch. That, that, that's me. That's it. That's it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I, 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 whatever it takes to make ten meats, you got you got to do it. If you want to, you want it bad enough. You got to you got to work and not sleep as much and like right. I said, whatever it takes. Yeah, heck yeah. I think I think it's super interesting, and I read it in the magazine, Fast Master Magazine, was it two months ago? But your profile says how you enjoy mowing grass, and I thought I, I had to <laughs> laugh at that because I didn't know it was serious or not. So I got to ask, was that serious? It, it was about 18 years ago whenever I started doing it. And now it, it's, it, you know, I guess it kind of is now. I, I've mowed yards forever, it seems like, since I guess I was 10, 11 years old. I mowed before that, but, you know, as far as kind of doing stuff to kind of help me with my fishing, I, I mowed for 18 or 19 years straight, and I'm still mowing now, but... Luckily, Dad helps me out a little bit when I'm off fishing, but that's how that's how I paid for my entry fees. Paid for my, you know, first boat. I saved my butt off and, you know, mowed grass. <laughs> that's that's what I did: mowed grass and fish. It's definitely yeah. paying off. I mean, we just looked it up, and your uh, 28 bass tournaments are what 26 times of the money. So hard work definitely pays off. So yeah. congrats I, to you. That's a heck of a feat. I appreciate it. Right <laughs> it's been it's definitely been a up and down roller coaster i can guarantee you that it's not a but it's like you said it's it's definitely a lot of work i mean a lot of sleepless nights a lot of grinding days and but you know i guess it's that's what you live for in life you know you want to follow your dreams and hope for the best and very I, i've been very blessed and very fortunate to make it this far right well, let's talk about that. You know, let's let's go back. We'd like to ask everybody who's new to the show, you know, what is that first fish uh, fish pet story, that first bass you caught? Who got you started fishing? We want to hear all about it. First bass, I, I can't even really remember. It's kind of, you know, a lot of guys talk about they remember their first fish. Uh, the one thing I can remember is growing up and dad gave me a bait caster and it felt like I was two. It seemed like it's been so long ago. And he said, when you can learn to throw this, you can start going to the lake with me. Well, that backfired about three or four days later. I had it figured out, you know, and because I lived in town at the time then with, you know, my parents and, uh, and my dad got me started going and I just, it's something that I could never lay down. It's, I guess it's so addicting because there's no consistency to fishing. You know, I mean, every day is different. No matter if your weather's the same, everything can be the same, it feels like, but the fish are different. Mm-hmm. And that's what's kept me hooked, I guess, my whole life. I played basketball and baseball, and you can somewhat control that, you know, to an extent. Um, and it just, 
not not that I got bored with it because I worked my tail off at it. I felt like, uh, but fishing was so much different day in and day out. No matter how good you thought you were or how terrible you thought you were, that fish can change your mind that day within seconds and minutes, hours, whatever. It can change your life. It seems like, and that's what just kept me going over and over these i'm 30 now so 30 years of it it seems like that's what i've just been driven to 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 want to do but my dad got me started and um and hell me and him fish together for 16 years i guess 16 that's awesome years. um and that part i missed you know missing fishing team tournaments with him but uh getting him to watch getting to see him come to the classic and watch me in that was uh it was worth missing a few team tournaments with him i think it was, it was pretty neat seeing him there i mean i never thought i'd see him at a classic watching me yeah now do they allow you to hop in team tournaments still every once in a while when you're at home uh, very few very very few they don't and what's really bad is they not i was i was consistent i'm not a guy who weighs 30 pound sacks or 25 pound sacks it's just it, that's tough to do in oklahoma and you got a lot of good guys from around here in oklahoma i mean there's some there's some hammers oh but, yeah uh, i was seems like i've done a lot better in those championships those two-day tournaments to where if you catch 15 to 18 pounds a day you're going to do well mm -hmm. uh, and that's kind of where i guess i prided myself fishing up through here you know to get from your opens, your single tournaments to, to here. It's, I think that's what I've just, I'm not, I'm not a guy who catches a bunch of fish. That's what, as you watch me on live, when I am on there, it's uh it's probably slow pace cause I catch six fish a day, but there's a, hopefully the right six, you know, to catch yeah. that 15 pounds a day. Um, cause Oklahoma work a lot of guys, you watch, you know, you might know Jason Christie, you ever heard of him? Oh yeah. yeah. No, no, he no, catches no, no. pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> You know, you watch him, and he, he's a grinder. You know, he, he doesn't catch a lot of fish, and, and that's a lot of similarities, I guess, when guys from Oklahoma, we look for individual fish, I guess, as con compared to uh, a school of 100, because we don't have schools of hundreds. We might have 100 bass in the lake around here. And and you guys, I push for, you know, to catch those five or six fish a day, and I, I've carried that to my elite deal. That's going to hurt me in winning one of these deals, I think, one of these days. Uh, I've, you know, I've had a couple of close chances here in the last two years and I've been, I've been blessed to have those, you know, I'm, I'm very, very fortunate with them, but, but it's just, I'm just, I'm just a grinder and that's kind of how my dad is. He's a grinder. I mean, he's 58, 59 years old and he could work my butt in the ground every single day. I mean, and I've really looked up to that and, and he's been a very, good role model for me because he's really pushed me to to do well in life and to not be satisfied mm -hmm. and you can use that in good and bad terms um but he's used it for a very good positive for me to really keep working harder to to make a better life i guess you'd say um to push and want to be better than what i was yesterday so that's, oh, that's, that's been fantastic. good yeah yeah i mean that that 26 out of 28 tournaments, I mean, I think that just kind of shows for itself there. And that, I think that kind of translates. So, yeah, and those, those two that I missed cost me making the elites in a couple of years. So those are, those are heartbreakers. Oh man. <laughs> so, well, I'd say you, I would say since then you're on the right track though. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of hope to keep it rolling. I'd kind of, you, if you knock on wood, if you can keep doing that, you keep making those classics and, uh, the classic's a big deal. I, I didn't really get a good grasp of it, I don't think. I, I went to I went to several from, or I guess four, I guess, up to um, just going and watching them. And I never, never really thought that I'd ever be there. But when I actually got there and they pulled them curtains back, pull you up on that stage, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, not necessarily, I guess, life-changing, but it, uh, it kind of gets you a complete circle in life, you know, for once. Mm -hmm. It was pretty cool. 100%. Let's awesome. talk about the the timeline to, to get there. Like, where, where did you start tournament fishing? And how did – obviously, you got you made it through the Opens. Yeah. But, like, I want, I want to hear about where you started tournament fishing and then that timeline to where you kind of realize 
I want to do this for a career. You know, like, like I said, I, me and my dad started fishing when I was 10, 11 years old. Tournaments. He fished up till that. Um, but, and finally, I, I don't know, things just kind of worked out. And it was like him and his partner, they were doing really well together. And I think my mom might have said, hey, I think it's time for you to start taking look fishing. So oh, no. <laughs> I have to go ahead and thank her a little bit on this deal. But, you know, me and him started fishing and we paid our dues. We we did. I mean, I, I'm going to say I was 11 when I started. We'll just use that. And when I was 13, I'll never forget my dad. We're at Sardis Lake here. It's, it's a smaller lake in Oklahoma. But back then, we used to have anywhere from 70 to 100 boats in that team tournament we were fishing. Ooh. And there were some good guys that fished in. We fished several different lakes. It wasn't just one lake. I mean, we fished six or seven different lakes in the championship. And uh, we ran to the first spot because, you know, that was when all we had was blast-off tournaments. You know, there wasn't any – everybody can go to their spot and start fishing at 6 o'clock. This was, you know, a 5.30, one, boat 1 through 80 was taken off. And uh, we ran to our first spot, and uh, Dad said, get up there. And I was kind of like – I mean, I would ran the troll motor a lot. He kind of let me do things. But he said, uh, it's your turn. That's kind of like, he said, I, I fished my, he said, I fished my time. He said, it's your time. And, uh, from 13 on, I've made every single decision when me and him were in the boat. I mean, he was like, well, we're going to get our teeth kicked in for a while, I guess. So <laughs> he, he was very patient with me. I mean, he, he would throw things in there. Hey, we ought to run, try this or try that. But he really let me do it. I mean, and coming Best in way to now, learn. That was that was very big for me. I mean, I didn't understand it then as much, other than the fact that he, you know, he just he said, "Hey, I I, I fished my time." He said, "I want to want to do well," but you know, we fished there and got close a few times to you know drawing a check, uh, you know, and and finally about I think when I uh, I played my last basketball game when I was my senior year and we went and picked up my first boat, which I bought from. Like I said, working my butt off. I'd take my mower to school with me. As soon as I get out of baseball practice, I'd mow till nine thirty or ten o'clock every night, uh, and then we'd fish on the weekends. But he, uh, I, we went and picked up my first boat, and we fished our first tournament out of it. And I think we might have got a check. We might have missed it, but the next one we won. And my dad had—I'm pretty sure he'd won angle the year before, uh, but he'd never won a championship. And that next year, we won Angle of the Year, and we won the championship in the same year. I mean, it was kind of like things are going to start going maybe. And we went along there, and we ended up winning Angle of the Year four, five, six, seven times. Um, uh, we won some championships. We Things just started rolling. And it might have been because I was fishing, you know, three, four, five days a week. You know, I'd, mow my, oh, yeah. I'd work my butt off for Monday through Wednesday, and then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I was on the lake. Uh, and, and I think that, it, you know, that, it, that done a lot for us. Cause you, you know, like now, you know, you got to work five and a half days a week and you get a day to go practice it. It's tough to beat guys that are practicing Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. um, but I, I, we kept fishing there and I think it was a year or so after I graduated, they had to open at Lake Texoma, which is about an hour and 20 minutes from me. And I consider that now one of my home lakes, I guess you'd say. Um, and I was like, and I was like, Lord, is if this is what I need to do, I want to get in the top five of this tournament. And thank God I didn't, you know, because I end up, I barely missed the cut. I, you know, back then they took thirty, and I think I ended up thirty fourth or fifth or something like that by a pound, hmm. and that hurt because yeah. I just won a championship or two up to that point. I go really thrash these guys, you know, show them what's up. I got showed what's up real quick. Those guys know what they know how to catch them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, which I was young and dumb, you know, and I, I wasn't ready. Um, a few years later, um, my buddy who's, hell, he's my parents age, but me and him are like best friends. We do everything together. Went to classics together. Uh, he's the first one that said, you're going to be on, you're going to be out here one of these days. And I was thinking, no, I'm not, you know, it's just, it's just a dream. And uh, he said, let's go fish the opens. And they were on the Arkansas river, which is here in Oklahoma, Muskogee. 
uh, Red River in Shreveport, and the other one was at Chaffalaya Basin in South Louisiana. And I said, I don't know. I kicked around and said, heck it, let's do it. Well, I was sitting third in the points going into the Chaffalaya Basin, and that was the one I missed my one of my checks in. Oh, that man. was the difference between me making the elites and missing it that year. <sighs> Definitely uh, demoted myself real quick. And uh, the next year, um, a lot of things happened. It just wasn't right here at the store. Um, I didn't feel like, because this store has been in the family for like 70 or 80 years. It's, you know, it's hard to, but things weren't right here as far as hands and stuff like that. And I'm not going to leave that. I'm not going to bite off the hand that feeds me. Um, I'm just, I'm just, I guess I like to be secure on things. Um, stayed here and I applied for them, but I didn't get in the first one. I said, well, I'm not going to no, go and fish the other two and not have a chance to make the leads. You know I mean? Right. I, it's not pointless. It would have been a good opportunity, but I just, and a year or two went by and that same guy, he said, you better get your butt back in the opens. You got to try them. And then lo and behold, I uh, qualified that next year and, and made the elites and it's it's been a it's been a grind ever since it's a fun grind but it's you work for it you know you work your whole life for it and you you spend those friday nights working on tackle instead of going with your buddies or saturday nights going with your buddies you know i got i got a close circle of good friends and and they understand it you know they said hey we'll see you in november you know, November <laughs> right. to about January. And, well, you know, that's, they just, they just know and they understand that and they see my drive and what I want to do in life. So it, it's been cool to watch, to have that support from them too. It's yeah. really good to have a good support group, especially friends and family. So yeah. that's good. So uh, from going on from there, you're almost done with your second year on the elite series. Where has been your favorite stop so far? I had I actually had a guy come to the store and ask me that the other day. He said, "Well, where would you go?" And I said, "Lake Champlain, hundred percent." And I don't know why. I mean, I I done decent there this year. Um, it was one of the places that I'm not an electronics guy. I'm from Oklahoma. We use a stick and stick it over the side of the boat. To know how deep it is. You know, <laughs> and uh, I really kind of got in tune with my electronics there. And you graft over them, you'd see them, you turn around, you throw them and catch them. It's kind of like fun. It's supposed to be, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I, I enjoyed that. And my dad, we don't have, we have some big smallmouth in Oklahoma, but not that many two to five pounders. And uh, I always said, I said, I'd love to bring my dad up here if we have to go anywhere in the world to fish. This is where I'd come. And, uh, but it was just, gosh, the practice was stupid fun. I mean, <laughs> you'd pull up on a spot and you'd graft over and it's like, well, there's six fish on this one boulder and you'd, make one cast it'd be a four pound you're like well you know then you have to leave it alone yeah and, uh of course tournament day they disappeared a lot of them did you know as, was, as per usual with brown yeah. fish but you know it was, it was funny i uh on day two i struggled the first day it caught me 18 something and day two i didn't have anything hardly and uh i mean i, I might have had close to the limit and i grafted this spot and for 50 yards it was solid fish. And I was wow. like, no way. I mean, those are, there's no way those are bats. I mean, they look like it. They were set up like it. And I turned around, my first cat or first drop was like a three and a half. And I said, uh oh. And it was just fast. <laughs> I mean, I would throw one in the live wood. I'd look at my graph from the back and you'd see them streaking. I would just throw a drop shot up there. And before it get to the bottom, I'd be loaded up again before I got throw them up. That's awesome. And, uh, That's and uh, all of a sudden you turn a couple of two and a half pounders loose and you see them streak under your trolling or back to the group. And they're like, yeah, we know what's going on here, guys. And they, they, they stop biting. Yep. It was the funnest 30 minutes to an hour. I, I mean, like I said, it was as fast as you could throw it in there. It was fun. It'd be a, if you had a team tournament, it would have been a blast. Oh, yeah. But, uh, but it, like I said, it was a fun, fun place and interesting place. I mean, you can. You can do anything if you want to go flip. I went and flipped mill full and caught fish doing that. And and I'm not even a spinning rod guy, but for some daggum reason, I had that spinning rod locked in my hand, and it was kind of fun. You pick up, and it's a three- or four-pounder on it, and you fight them around for two hours. <laughs> uh, good old fairy rod. I don't know how many I boat flipped. Three and a half, four-pounders I boat flipped. Oh, that's they so much go, fun. You and me, <laughs> You're talking up Andy's alley right now. 
but hell, they'd be jumping everywhere, and hell, they'd jump and hit the side of the boat. You're like, next time they do that, they're coming in the boat, and you just yep. hell with it, <laughs> and then just go to jumping at them and throw them in the boat. It was, it was fun. I mean, oh. that it was a very interesting place. Uh, I mean, but you know, I'm a big rod guy. I love braid, big stick. I love cramming it down their throat and flipping them. And uh, you know, I had a, I had a good tournament at Gunnersville this year, and yeah, I think you got third, right? Yeah, I've for three weeks straight, I had an ounce and a quarter weight in my hand. That's I mean, amazing. I mean, that, and I, we don't have grass in Oklahoma. There's a few lakes on your own, but nothing like where we'd been, you know, yeah. from grass flats and stuff. And and trying to learn that was interesting, but it it was fun. I mean, you when that punch rig drops through there and they just cremated it, it's. <laughs> It, it gets you going because you don't know what you're going to set the hook on. It could be a 10 inch or it could be a 10 pounder. Right. You know, I guess that's the, the fun part of it. Not, but I like yeah. to flip period anyway. So yeah. you don't even have to be accurate when you're flipping grass either. Just flip. You know? <laughs> so I got, I'm going to have to crash your way through bit. everything. Just that's <laughs> it. <laughs> let it fly. And then you get a 10 inch and you set the hook and it comes flying past you and you're just like, Oh crap. <laughs> yeah. Poor guy. Every time you decided to halfway set the hook and it was a big and you're like, well, yeah. that was, like, that was dumb. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, further ado then, are you looking forward to Fork? I am. You know, I I ended up 11th there last year and it, it's aggravated me ever since because I was catching on how I love to fish with a swim jig in three inches of water, it seemed like. I mean, it was, um, I lost some really good you know five to seven pound fish there on a swim jig it just wasn't meant for me to make it you know what i mean that wasn't my plan um where i was supposed to go and and it but i had a fun tournament that that week i mean it was it rained eight inches so that's some good because the lake only come up eight inches because it didn't have much drain but it kept the water dingy and them fish were still up shallow um this one is going to be a little interesting um up till Saturday, I think the weather has been very warm here in Oklahoma. And, you know, it's two and a half hours south of me, um, but it's been warm. I mean, not unseasonably warm because normally we're deer hunting in t shirts here in this time of year. But we had a cold front come through, and I just got here to the store and it was like 38, 39 degrees. Oof, you're colder and, than here in Buffalo. Yeah, it was miserable. Um, Oklahoma City had major ice storm i mean there's not a tree in oklahoma city that's not just cracked all the heck right now because ice you know because the leaves are still on i mean we we weren't even changing colors here yet um that's crazy but, that's early yeah it's it's very early i haven't seen this type of temperature in at least 15 18 years normally it's, it's, like i said it's 75 80 degrees we might get a frost but not like we're getting right now i mean it's it's cold it's been raining miserable I mean, you don't want to be outside at all. I mean, the cows don't even want to be out there. No, I believe it. <laughs> so they, they're like, this sucks. You know, I just want to go inside. But uh, it's, I think I've looked at the weather forecast. We're looking to be in the mid to upper 60s. Um, you know, with the cooler mornings, which, you know, that's kind of getting normal for this time of year. I think uh, the guys, there's going to be some guys that catch them out deep. But I think the topwater guys, which are hopefully I'm one of them, <laughs> Uh, they get to play up in that less than four foot of water deal. I, I hope we get to really play because, man, if whoever's got a live camera on them, if they're not out deep, we could see some all out gorillas. Just some just fireworks. Waters. Oh, it could be. It, the lake doesn't have the grass that a lot of people think of Texas having, you know, like your Rayburns and stuff. Um, they've got rid of a lot of it, which hurts, I think, you know, I mean, Grass is a big deal. I mean, in fish, your your bait fish have something to hide in. Your your spawn has something to hide in. Um, but it's and it's it's got a little bank grass and there's a little bit of uh, coontail and hydrilla, just very few areas. But who wouldn't better want to throw a I don't know a pencil popper over a clay point and watch an eight or nine pounder just engulf that thing you know to their gullet and not have to worry about grass exactly <laughs> you know we gotta worry about some trees but it's a like i said it's it's a different fishery um it's it's got like i said it's got biggins in it you know i mean it's got biggins 
Uh, but it's it gets pressured pretty dang hard. I mean, I went there before off limits, and uh, it was miserable. It was 105, and I got out at daylight, and I wanted to hit a few areas, and there was three boats on each one of them. I said, well, <laughs> might as well just keep on moving down the line because it, it, it gets hit. But maybe we're going to be hitting it at, I think, uh, the first day of rifle season. So there might not be as many boats out there fishing around. On Fingers it. So, crossed. Yeah, we uh, we might hit it right. You know, we Gunnersville was tough. It got really good a week or two after we left. Uh, Chickamauga was the same way. I mean, I think right after we left, it was like four, five, six days later, it's like all of a sudden the gorillas showed up. And it was like, oh, let's start biting. And uh, so I think they caught them then and. <laughs> But I think Fork's going to be a place that it's it's got biggins in it anyway, and there's going to be some seven, eight, nine, maybe ten. You might see eleven or twelve pounder weighed in. You don't know, but it it's got them and it's got a bunch of them. It's just a matter of if they're grouped up just yet. You know, I mean, we're not. I me and me and Lee or Livesey are you know pretty good buddies, and talking to him, he's like, man, if we were here two weeks later those big ones would group up together and it would be a freaking jack fest he said jeez but with this cold temp if it stays cold for a few days it could cause it to happen sooner i would think i, I agree with you I, I the fall is so tricky <laughs> it is it, it's a it's a fall's a funny time you know a lot of people i've done i've done well in the fall because normally tough fishing you know we've talked about me mm-hmm. grinding uh Oklahoma, if you get six or seven bites in the fall, you're doing fairly well. You know, if you get the, you know, you got to have the right ones, of course. But that's, that's what I think has helped me this fall is just really putting my head down and fishing. And I'm hoping Fork's kind of like that. You know, there's going to be, I've told a few people, there's going to be three to seven guys that just blast them. You know, a lot of them catch 25 a day. You know, I'm, hit 25 one day and I would have 17 to 20 the next three days. Mm -hmm. You're going to be doing all right. Doing really, really well. I mean, I'm going to, I'm suspecting to be like, we were there in June last year. um, And fishing was pretty dang good, you know, but they hadn't just really grouped up out deep. We had some fish spawning. They were doing everything. Um, And I'm thinking the weights are going to be somewhat similar to that. You know, I don't know if someone's going to crack a hundred. It's definitely like to happen. Um, but the likely of three or four guys doing it is probably going to be a lot slimmer than what it would have been in June, you know, mm-hmm. um, it's just, but you know, you, the COVID this year is these lakes have got hit harder than they have ever hit in their entire lives. Oh yeah. Um, and I think that's, that's played somewhat while our fishing has been a little tougher this fall. Chickamauga, I thought there was a tournament going on every day cause there was boats everywhere. I mean, it hell Monday. I was like, you guys, do y'all work around here? Is it just a fishing place? Because <laughs> they, they was out there getting it, you know, and kudos to them. Maybe they got to figure it out how they can fish seven days a week because I, I still haven't figured that out yet. Right. I don't think any of us have. <laughs> <laughs> Besides Bailey, he's been living the life this summer. So he's been hanging See, out I it. fish a lot, but it's been <laughs> – doesn't mean that I'm employed right now. COVID's got me, COVID's oh. got me sitting at home, unfortunately. But do you think if if COVID didn't hit with the schedule that you guys had, you would have had – would you have seen multiple tournaments with over 100 pounds? Oh, yeah, 100%. Um, you know, Chick would have definitely been a 100-pounder. You know, it, that's got him. Santee right. Cooper would have been another 100-pounder. You know, th- those places got him. Like, I've – I went to Santee and I went there right after the classic because um, I'd never been there. I said, I want to go look at this place. Everybody talked about it. it's nothing but a lower unit, you know, resting area. <laughs> and right. uh, I wanted to go and I was scared to death because that lake wasn't mapped at all on my units. Um, luckily, Hummingbird got us a map right before we got there this last time. And it really it, it helped a lot. I mean, it was Stuff that I spent hours graphing back in the summer because I went again. Um, I, you know, I wanted to really look it over, and I spent hours, and I was like, they pulled out those maps, and it was like, well, hell, all my stuff is now known to everybody and their dog, you know. <laughs> uh, so, 
but it's got them. I mean, I were the area I fished, Santee, I fished there for, well, I guess six days and never hit the same tree twice. I mean, it was just, and I only stayed in one area pretty much. I, once I got some bites, I said, I'm going to figure this area out. And I somewhat did, but not good enough. Uh, but Chick, I could see where if it was at full pull, there is more daggum laydowns. If you go into a little pocket, little creek, there's 20 laydowns that are beautiful in every one of them. Yeah. Uh, and they said it's like the land of the giants. You pull in there in the spring and you just try to find just five to seven pounder on a bed. And that I don't. That would be unbelievable to me. That'd be like going to a stock pond. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but Big I, we dump spawners. For sure. And <laughs> Fort putting us there. We was going to be there again in I think we was going to be in June, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, this year, the way the weather and everything was, those fish had went ahead and would have been out there on their deeper stuff. Uh, and I think your Keith Combs, your Lee Livesey, you know, your guys that know that lake, would they, you know, they, 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 they know it. They would have, they would have, they would have found them big schools and they would have pounded on them. But you know, it's kind of funny you look at this you look at this group of guys not funny but you look at this group of guys and from top to bottom you don't know who's going to win no you, you really don't i mean it, it could be anybody and it's it's kind of fun because a lot of people don't know a lot of us you know it's mm-hmm. we're the new guys on the block i guess you'd say we've been here for two years now but anybody can do anything you know i mean it's you bring guys who you, for me at Chickamauga, I didn't know anything better to do than what I what I what I've learned, and you know I, I wish I could have done a little bit better in that one. But you could have pulled up on the right stretch of grass like Lee did, or the right pocket or two. And just from blew Texas, it. All of a sudden, he wins it. You know, you, you don't know, and it's it's kind of exciting because you know it's kind of like a <laughs> bad news bears in a way sometimes. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's I think that's that's made it more exciting for me, I guess, watching this group and getting to know this group of guys. And it's been a bass has been fun the last two years. Yeah. If that, I mean, it's, it's been a, it's been more of a family oriented deal, I guess you'd say all of us get along. I mean, you know, you're going to have a couple of guys and it doesn't matter what you do. Aren't going to be jobbers with everybody, but right. this is kind of a cool deal. You look in line, Someone holds up a Gussie held, caught that nine pounder at Santee, and I I was right behind him. I was like, "Great, Gus, thanks a lot for me." You know, I got to go up behind a nine pounder, and my <laughs> five won't weigh nine pounds. And it was everybody was like, "You know, hell, Gussie, that's awesome." You know, good job, man. Congratulations. You know, it wasn't no like, "I want to cut your bag open, and let the fish fall to the in the tank, and you not go up there with the fish," type deal. So it was, right. it's cool. I mean, I, I've really. Really enjoyed the last two years. You know, it's, you know, Bass, you know, you got Davey Height. That guy's a cool dude. If you can ever get him on here and talk to him, I don't know if you have. Dude, he's awesome. I mean, that'd be, that'd be awesome. you want it, you want a good guy that can really show you the whole entire ropes. He's been there through it all with Bass, you know, and, mm-hmm. and really a good dude. I mean, and then you got Ronnie Moore, Bowman, those guys. It's a lot of fun working with them. Yeah, one hundred percent. It's definitely made uh, fantasy fishing quite uh, an interesting experience for us. Oh, I bet. <laughs> Luke Palmer, who in the hell is he? Oklahoma. <laughs> is this, Where uh, I don't know. He likes mowing well, grass though, so I might pick this guy. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's funny. I like the fantasy fishing thing. It's like when I go to pick, I go to choose like in re- past results, and I'm like, last year was real confusing because it's like crap it's like group d i don't know anybody in here what their strength are so i go back to like where do they do good at yeah <laughs> so it's a huge guessing game it still kind of is so it's fun yeah. so you get up here north and everyone and you in know the johnsons are gonna do good guess he's gonna do good. yeah <laughs> well, it's that? funny like in buffalo i I've, I've known about the johnston brothers for probably like 10 10 years since I started tournament fishing because they would, every big tournament in the area, they would come down and just womp on people. So it's just like, yeah. Uh, so it was like, oh, have you ever, have you talked to them much? You ever been no, around? we haven't. No. 
you ought to get them guys. They're they're two cool cats. I, I really like Chris and Corey. I mean, I've I really got acquainted with them more last year at iCast and stuff. Uh, Cause you know, I mean, we all none of us knew each other. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, we really didn't. I mean, you know, a few of us did from this area and stuff. But I mean, the more we get around each other, it's like. You know, hell, they're allowed to come down here and go hunting knowing them whenever we go to Fork or something like that or Carl Jacobson. I mean, or, you know, we, we've got, we got some good dudes and I've, I get, I try to get along with everybody. I mean, cause Hey, we're in this deal. Is, they're, all, they're doing the same thing, trying to make are, a living. You know, we want to make a living at it, but if, well, if you go catch them and I don't, that's my own fault. It's not your fault that you're done better than me at this one. I can't get mad at you for finding them. You know, that's, that's why I've looked at it a lot. I mean, I'm going to, when my dad and I were at turn, team tournaments, we're the last ones to leave the way. in. I don't know if it's because we didn't want to have to go home and work cows or something like or mow grass. We just, but I, I love sitting around the camaraderie of BSing with everybody. And, and in the end, that's what all this is. You know, we've made memories with guys and like, you know, I've got to meet y'all and we did, if it wasn't for this league and sports and stuff, I would have never ran into y'all. I would have never right. left Colgate first off. Hell, we're, you know, I, <laughs> I never would have got out of here. This would have been my place, which is not a bad place to live, but I, I never would have got out of here. You know, I mean, it's, right. I, I might've went and fished a few tournaments around here close and stuff like that, but I never would have traveled to New York to fish for smallmouth. It just... I never would have. And right. uh, so it's been a, a life changing experience for that. Cause like I said, I've got to see watching Bassmasters my whole life and saying, man, I, boy, it'd be cool to fish there, or go to Okeechobee or go to St. Lawrence River or St. John or Champlain. And that's all it would have been, would have been for me. It's just a cool place to go. It never would have actually happened. And very right. blessed, fortunate to, for it to have happened. Yeah. Have you ever been up north? For when the smallmouth are spawning? No, but they say oh, it's ridiculous. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they might be the dumbest fish, like, alive. They're kind of like, I don't know how to explain them. You can throw anything at them on a bed and they'll eat it. Like, they are just dumb. <laughs> you can catch them four times over. Like, you could yeah. have just caught it and, like, held it up for a picture, put it back, drop back down, they'll eat it again. Yeah, I don't need to go something like that. That'd ruin you. That would, that would, <laughs> that's like, you say that. About, uh, you know, going to Champlain, you know, graphing over them, throwing one or two times and they eat it. Hey, you come down here and you think your graph's broke. You graphed over these fish and you're like, hell, those are <laughs> fish. My graph's lying to me. And it's, it's, <laughs> these fish down here get worked on and, and they get smart real quick. It don't yeah. take long and it kind of sucks down here. You know, I mean, we, we do have some good fisheries, but, not the dumbness that some of those fish up north are. Your largemouth are really dumb. Oh, <laughs> it depends on where you fish. Like if yeah. it's a time of year. If it's a smallmouth fishery, like people tend to go after the smallmouth, so the largemouth are dumb as bricks. But we have a couple like finger lakes that are like largemouth first, smallmouth second, but giant smallmouth in them, and they can be fickle as can be and tough. Oh, yeah. So we have some tough largemouth fisheries besides. Cayuga, early on, dumb, and Champlain is dumb good. Like, Always it's just, dumb. <laughs> Always <just> dumb. dumb. <laughs> I have never fished a tournament where it was that tight. Like, from top to, or from the first place to 40th was like four Seven, pounds. pounds yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it was ridiculous. And, uh, you know, I was. Welcome I to New York. Something. And it was like. <laughs> Hell, I had almost 19 pounds. I was like, woo, you know, I'm going to be sitting pretty good. And I'm in like 20th place. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I never, I knew it was good, but I didn't know it was that good. Like, yeah. I it, I had some fish it ruins a lot of people because people are like, oh, I can, I can crush them. And then they go down to Pennsylvania and they struggle to get bit. And they're like, what's going on? New York yeah. is definitely a different place to fish. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a very special place. I mean, it, it really is. And, I just hope we can keep it that way, you know, for yeah. years to come. Because I know this year it got pounded. <laughs> oh, you know? oh, it definitely did. COVID so, really put a damper on some of our favorite lakes to fish. And it's like, man, I can't even get bit. Like, what is going on here? 
and then only catching 30 a day instead of 120. Oh, I mean, like, there's a couple of Finger Lakes where we struggle to get, like, six, seven bites a day. Oh, wow. Because cause they spray them, and there's all kinds yeah. of weird stuff they do with our lakes. And August, August, so. September, August, September time, say, like, on a Cayuga, where it usually, you know, any other month out of the year, Cayuga, it'll take over 25 pounds to win, you know. It'll take, of, like, 15, 16. No, I mean, at September, what was it, the 15th? 15th September that we had our federation tournament. Oh, here. yeah. And there was a guy that got, I think it was fourth place with two fish. It, yeah, it was brutal. Brutal. Oh, I had wow. top time with one fish that was two pounds as a co angler. <laughs> Holy cow. So yeah. that's what we were at Cayuga last year. I'd never seen anything. Y'all got lawnmowers for grass out in the water. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, we, we hate those. Absolutely. Yeah, that was, <laughs> that's when I was there and I. There were some, I mean, we uh, several of us went and looked at it because, I mean, I just wanted to go look at it. And and I asked him, I said, what the heck was that thing out in the lake cutting all the grass? And he's like, yeah, that's not a thing you want to see. And sure nope. enough, that old north end, you know, was almost topped out. And uh, there was no grass. You know, it was like, I guess, a foot or two tall, which yeah. is really whacking them at. But uh, I couldn't believe it. I mean, I said, I never dreamed that they could whack it all down like that. But they damn sure did. Oh, yeah. And they right do that to body. all of our big lakes like that. They just decimate them. And for recreation, I guess, so people don't get their boat motors when they're skiing. Yeah. They, exactly. say it's only, they say it's only for the hydrilla, but we have very little hydrilla that I've seen. It they have a lot of coontail. They have a lot of milfoil, and they're killing all of it. They're only going over the milfoil and the coontail. <laughs> <laughs> you know, those people could go out there like another mile – and it's like 150,000 foot deep, and they could tube yeah. and ski all they wanted to and never get their props hung up. Yeah. Right. But, it, it, all it but they have to do it where it's 10 foot deep and rock piles everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? Yeah. Uh, oh, it's frustrating. But, it is. I, I but imagine, it's, you know, it's so special. So. We had some lakes down here that finally got a little hydrilla in them, which it, it's liable to flood and the lake go 20 foot high, and then they suck it 10 foot low here. Uh, so our grass, you know, we don't have it. And we did have some hydrilla in the lake, and uh, it was getting real pretty, and they had the college – they had a college tournament over here in Oklahoma. Um, I don't know if it's a championship or something, but the guys won it fishing hydrilla. Yeah, two years later, that hydrilla is non-existent. They went and sprayed every bit of it, killed it all. <laughs> I mean, and it just – Oops. It killed, I mean – I kind of got to key in on that stuff before people really knew about it. And then all of a sudden it's gone now. So that's done. So Dang. just what it is. Can't do nothing about it. They sprayed it. And now you got to go find pound and a halfers everywhere. If he's oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm curious. So obviously, you know, we talked earlier, 26 out of 28, that times in the money, you know, what would you say is, the biggest testament to your consistency is that just you being able to being comfortable to adjust the different patterns or is it a strength that you have that is just more versatile region by region and what do you what do you think that is you know a lot of people have their favorite baits um favorite way of techniques of catching fish I don't have that. If, if that, I mean, don't get me wrong. I would love to go flip grass or flip bushes, you know, or whatever, but I don't, I don't care what I catch them on. I just want to catch fish, you know, whether if it's picking up, a, you're probably going to laugh about this. I didn't have a spinning rod till last year. Did not own one. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> I, I went trout fishing in a stocked river they have over here by my, where I went to college at. It don't really count when you got a five foot spinning rod, you know, with a little bitty rooster tail on it. But I don't I don't care what I catch fish on. I mean I can catch them punching, I can catch them flipping a eighth ounce weight or a Cinco or you know, a bad mama. It, it don't matter. I, I just love to catch fish. And I'm very fortunate here back home I have some we consider them lakes, but they're like 20 to 50 acres and they're private ponds that I'm able to get on. And you can catch fish on about anything. That there. sounds like fun. It is. I mean, you know, to an extent, you know, but you can take, uh, I don't know, is there a spook? 
And if you haven't caught very many fish on a Zara Spook, you can go throw that and get confidence throwing it. Um, this off season when COVID was going on, we went, th- me and my dad go there together, you know, just because we want, f- I want to fish with my dad as much as I can. Cause you know, you, <laughs> you want to spend as much time as you can. Right. I took a spinning rod and a dinger and wacky worm almost exclusively because I had no idea how to do that. Wow. It, it sounds stupid. It sounds, you're like, are you kidding me? This guy Fair enough. This like, never threw it. I didn't throw one. Barely knew how to rig it. Had to look mm. on TV how to do it. Oh, jeez. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's pitiful. I mean, I, I've literally, I've been with a broomstick my whole life. I mean, <laughs> with those spinner baits, square bills, and flip a jig here. And uh, That's incredible. But I, I really think going and doing that stuff has really helped me to get comfortable doing certain things. Because that, that mm-hmm. those ponds, whatever, they have grass in them. It's coontail, but it's some of it's out to eight or nine foot of water. So, I mean, I, I learned to, uh, to flip outside grass lines doing that a little bit, you know, um, and flipping timber and, you know, it's and spawn, you know, learning to work fish on beds and stuff like that. I've been very blessed and fortunate to do that. Um, but I think just I look for stuff that not everybody's fishing. You know, I don't I don't go and fish the complete obvious stuff you know i might fish two docks in the back of a pocket there someone's like well hell i'm not going to stop and fish that that's wasting my time i'll go catch that one fish that's there you know that's one more fish and i'm closer to catching my fifth fish mm-hmm. um, and i i mean I, davy davy Hyatt and i were talking um at gunnersville he called me because you know they kind of called to figure out kind of what we're doing on live to be able to talk to us and uh he said you know, what are you doing? I said, Davey, I got four rods on the deck and three of them had the same thing on it. Uh, you know, I had a, I had a war eagle buzz toad on one and I had a bad man with a spine crawl and a spine crawl on the other three and they were all punching. Uh, and I, Fun. yeah, he said, <laughs> he said, that's when you do your best when you're doing something you're comfortable. He said, he feels like, and that's when I have a bunch of rods in my deck, First off, I can't handle clutter all over my deck. So if I have more than seven or eight rods, I'm like, this is too much stuff. You know, I got to start putting things up. But to me, I, I, I have backed up to simple stuff, you know, doing things you're comfortable with. Because I took from uh, Lake Ufala this year when we were there. There's bank water, willow grass all the way around that thing. My dumb butt spent two days grafting. Hmm. I mean, don't get me wrong. It was eventually one out there. That's not my strength. The first day I went out there and I was kind of not necessarily lost. I screwed up, had 11 pounds. The next day I said, I'm sticking this water wheel stuff and that's it. Had 17 and a half, 18 pounds. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just like when I left there and I was like, you idiot, you know, go to what you know, because if you're fishing against these guys and you're going to do your weaknesses, that's a surefire sure way to lose every time yes and and you you have to be comfortable in with what you're doing you know it's it's like me mowing grass i can i'm a weed eating son of a gun you know i know what i got know what i can use and know what what i feel good with that's what i can go do and the same way as fishing you know you, you got to do that and yep. I'm, a, I'm a guy that's less than five foot of water i mean that's just if I'm not stirring up mud with my trolling motor, I'm lost most mm-hmm. of the time. And uh, <laughs> it's, I mean, don't get me wrong. You've got to learn to fish out there deeper. Champlain, I learned a little bit there. And I've learned to drop shot off my graph and do things like that. But you go back to your strengths, and that's that's where you're going to feel comfortable and you're going to do better, you know. Yep. Right, 100%. I agree. That's awesome. Andy, you got anything left for Luke? No, that, that was great. We're going to hit him with the last question here. I I assume. Right. Yeah. So, Luke, our last question for you. We like to ask everybody near the show. Uh, and that question is, if you could sit down and invite three people, they could either be alive presently or 400 years ago, doesn't matter. They don't have to be the fishing industry. If you could sit down, invite three people to say, have a steak and a beer, who are you going to invite and pick their brain? Zona. Okay. K 
Can I have four? Can I have four? Can I have four? Yeah. You, you can have four. four. Go I'm going to have Zona. This is going to sound, y'all are going to be like, ah, BS. Zona, Davey Hyatt, Mercer, and Ronnie Moore. All at the same <laughs> table. Those are, you have so much knowledge from top to bottom with those guys. Ronnie Moore, that kid, I say kid, hell, he's just a few years younger than me. He has so much knowledge about the sports, fishing. I mean, I could say, hey, Ronnie, what happened in 1984 in the <laughs> classic? He'd be like, well, Hank Parker come in third, throwing a spinner bait and lay downs at Texoma, whatever. He's very <laughs> good at that. I mean, he could fact check to all of us, you know. <laughs> and Mercer, he, he just – Hilarious. <laughs> he's Mercer. I, I love the guy to death. He's He brought me out of my shell. I mean, I'm, I'm a very quiet, laid-back guy. I really am. I'm very conservative on things. Um, that guy brought it out of me. The more I've got around him, the more me and him really hit it off, and I really like the guy. Zona, he, his knowledge of fishing, period, because he's talked to the greats. He's talked to the fan dam. He's been around Edwin. Klein, he's been with them all. He's fished with them all. So, I can just take, I can just pick his brain. He knows everybody anyway, mm -hmm. so we can just pick his brain and get everything out of him. <laughs> but he's a good guy. I mean, man, the and Davey Hyatt, you can't say enough about that guy. I mean, sitting back with him and you could sit there and have a steak and a beer with him and you could learn more in 30 minutes than I'll ever learn in my lifetime of fishing probably. Um, but what I want to, what I got back from all this, I, the first time I just want to tell us real quick, I went to Bass and they done our first impression, I guess you'd say. We went and done some videos. I hadn't fished a tournament yet, you know, I fished the Open. This is my first time to uh, JM Associates, their, their headquarters there in Little Rock. And I walked in there and Tommy Sanders said my name. Uh, his voice is the coolest voice there is. Yeah. I mean, and it's the same. It's the same as if he's talking on TV, as if if me and him were sitting in the same room talking. It's the neatest thing in the world. I mean, it kind of so cool. blew my mind. Bob Cobb was there too. That was like that. Uh, That's all, even better. <laughs> it's like the Bob Cobb, you know. Yeah. Uh, but getting around those guys and Zona talking to them and their voice is the same. It's it's not a put on show. That's that's who they are and. That's Bassmaster, you know, yeah. and it's, it's, it's been really, it's, it's been cool and hey, it's, it's a dream, you know, and, uh, I, you know, it's kind of so when I, you know, I talked when I came to them curtains at the 50th classic, dude, you can't, you can't even fathom what that's like until you're sitting there in your boat and you got 17 pounds of fish in a whale and you're about to go whale man on the classic. Dude, it was <laughs> twenty thousand fans screaming. It's awesome. And you look up there, and there's your family. That's that's, awesome, that's what it's all about. I mean, that's you got your mom and your dad, and hell, the state daughter from Oklahoma is from the same town I am, and I'm best friends with her husband. It's it, and they were there. I mean, that's it's, awesome. It's awesome. I mean, you can't you can't describe it. You can't put it in words. But I wish you could do it. And I wish you could do it. I wish. Everybody could go do that one time. Not even if there's fans. You don't have to have fans. When you drive through there just in your boat, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> oh, it's, I'm sure. <laughs> it's, you got Mercer up there zinging out his normal stuff. It's it's awesome. This is It's definitely the hype that it was made up to be, and uh, I'm very fortunate and blessed to be there. And, you know, so I, cool. when you got I've, – I've had good sponsors with me. You know, they have they've went above and beyond. I – and like I said, one of those deals that people will say everybody chases dollars of where your money's at. That's not me. I'm a guy who goes with what I believe. You know, I, I like I said, I was kind of worried at, at first about Gil, but I, I knew they had good product. But when I got in with them and really seen their process, I'm hooked. You yeah. know, that. They have very good clothing and stuff that I believe in personally that I believe in. I mean, I, I talked to, to the top of them and they've been nothing but good to me. And 
they listen. They want they want to have good products. They want to be they want they want good things. Yeah. They don't just want to be oh let's throw it out there and get it out as fast as we can. No, they want they want you to be happy as a customer. And you know, same way with you know my bait companies, you know Yum and Abu. Those people care about what they have, you know. And another one that a lot of people don't really see and hear is you know I got Horizon Trike. The guy has been with me since 15. He took a chance on me. No one else would. And said, look at this kid from little heebie-jeebie hillbilly USA. And he took a chance on me, and uh, he's, he's been very good to me. And, and he's take care, take care of everybody. Awesome. And that's, that's what I, I want. You know, a lot of kids are chasing, you know, they're chasing sponsors. But, they're, you know, don't, don't chase money. Chase what you believe in because – you can't sell product you don't believe in. 100%. I think you know, Gil I got, a, should... I, I got a hardware store here. If I don't believe in my product, it's not going to go on the shelf. Nope. Because, well, you can get blasted real quick. Now we oh, got for Facebook, sure. Instagram, and, you know, all the internet stuff. You can get hammered in a hurry. Right. So it's, you know, go with what you believe in, you know, no matter what company it is. You know, just whoever you have your faith in, and that's, that's what you got to go with, you know, and I'm, I've, I've aligned myself with good people and I, I feel like I've got good people and that's who I want to stay with. And, uh, Heck yeah. but it's, yeah. They, you know, everybody's should, uh, got their own niche. Gil should have under their logo just saying Luke Palmer farm approved. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, put that, hey, I put it through the test. I can guarantee you, <laughs> you name it. Kicked, you know, it's, it's, it's held up, but it, you know, like I said, I, I've been blessed with good companies and that's how I've, you want to make people you want to stay with, you know, if you can make them a career out of the deal, that's, that's what you want. Or I feel like I want, um, you know, everybody has their own different thing, but I just soon have my circle small as I would this big circle of, of they don't know who you are. You right. know, I'd, rather, I'd rather be in that. And you, you guys do the same thing. You know, you'd rather keep your circle small and, you know, you want to be, you want to have a big picture, but you want to have people that you can, look up for you know take care of and do stuff like that and that's absolutely 100 so well luke yeah. we want to say thank, thank you, you so much, dude, for taking time out of your night it's been an absolute pleasure speaking yeah. with you we really do appreciate it yeah i appreciate you guys best of luck at fork and uh hopefully we can find out what the best schedule is here soon and i really look forward to that getting dropped you're not the only one. I'm kind of I'm kind of anxious to see when we're going to start, where we're going, because you know they're going to have big fish. You know we're going to catch some big ones. They're going to put us on some good lakes and good times. And you know this year we didn't get to do it because you know COVID uh, messed everything COVID. up. But thanks a lot, COVID. But yeah, uh, I can only pray up. that you guys come back to Buffalo finally. It's it's well needed. Hey, you never know. You, <laughs> <laughs> we went all over the country this last year, and it's. You know, it's been fun. I, I think we're gonna we're gonna have a good year. Hey, no matter yeah, if we absolutely. get a lake that we catch four pounds a day, we're gonna catch thirty pounds a day. It, it's gonna be fun. Someone's gonna whack them. We're gonna have a good time, and Mercer's gonna be up there jumping up and down, swinging his towel around. So, oh we'll yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of find it funny that like Mercer is like Canada's funny man, but he's slinging it all over like redneck USA. It's just so funny. It's like total cliche in itself. <laughs> I ain't playing the Chiefs fan. Yeah, he, hey, that guy could fit in. He could talk to a fence post right now and make buddies with him. I but I, yeah. I said, hey, that's what it takes. You don't hey, just good people. Million, you know, yep. you don't. You just don't find guys like that. And uh, you know, Bass has had a good has had a good group of doing it. You know, they. You know, hey. Bob Cobb, this is Bassmasters. How many? Yeah. That's all. When I think of Bassmasters coming on, that's what you hear, and and it's hey, it's a dream. Hey, when you look at just from like an organizational level, what's the one constant? It's always bass. That's so, it. I hope it stays that way. Me as long too. as I can stay there, anyway. I hope I hope it's here <laughs> for many more years. I mean, it's it's a fun place. I mean, you know, everybody's got their different views, and I respect that. You know, that's what the, that's that's their thing, but. Hey, I'm a Bob Cobb fan. I can't leave without that. <laughs> well, I mean, as long as you stay in like the 90 percentile of catching checks, I'm sure you're uh, going to stay in bass for a, quite quite a while. So until you're done with it, no, <laughs> so, I, I hope that happens. I mean, I, yeah. I'm waiting for that year that's not going to be good. But 
you know, and that's going to happen. I mean, it just is. I mean, you're going to have your ups and downs, but, uh, like Paul and Nick said, I mean, I've become pretty good friends with him and Jockson. They're, they're good dudes too. And, you know, we call it luck, but Paul and Nick says, uh, where opportunity meets preparation. Yep. And, uh, Control all different. the variables. Exactly. And, you know, and that's, you know, you, I'm, I'm still a rookie in my mind, you know, I'm still learning. And, uh, but if you, if you quit learning, that's, you might as well that's quit. whatever you, that yep. I agree with you hundred percent. Like Clint said, when I quit, when I quit doing this and I catch a big one, that's when I need to quit. And he's still right. doing it. Oh, right. man. 100%. Nothing better. No, for sure. I don't, you could play any sport in the world, and I'll put catching a giant bass up there on top of excitement on anything, especially during a tournament. Oh, 100%. I mean, yeah, you catch a tournament, it's like uh, your whole life changes in a way oh, yeah. right there. In that, that, that five seconds seemed like five minutes, and – you can still, I can still remember catching an eight fifteen at fork and having big bass for the first two or three days till cop knocked me out. Yeah, you're but, sitting uh, at you're sitting at like the hotel at night or campsite. You're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that happened. Uh, you both stop. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know quite to do with my hands. <laughs> you know what's crazy? That, that's what it's like when you walk yeah. on stage. You're like, <laughs> uh, hold her up. It's man. It's it's awesome. I just want to yeah. get one of them blue trophies where I can kind of, I can figure out what to do with my hands with it. Perfect. For that classic trophy. That, well, that would be the dream right there. We're definitely pulling off. for you, Luke. So, yeah. I appreciate it. I would absolutely love it uh, when I'm watching live on Fork. If just for a second, if you just went and just did this, like I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if I catch a big one, it'll be like. It'll happen, promise you. I, we'll be walking. Stage. A little we'll shameless stage uh, serious angler plug. Yeah, yeah. Out there. Throw it out there. We'll be <laughs> well, It'd be awesome. awesome. Well, Luke, thank you again, man. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. You're always welcome on the show, dude. It's been awesome talking to you. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you again. Here. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. you thank have you, a good man. night and get some sleep. Uh, yeah. I got to go order now. Hell, I got oh. I got work to do. Oh, <laughs> man. Well, well, good luck and uh, take care. Obviously, get down to Texas safe and uh, yes. we'll, we'll be rooting for you, dude. All right, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, you course, have a good man. night. Right. Take care. Bye. Thanks. I really hope he does the hand things at four. Oh, me too. That's <laughs> freaking awesome. <laughs> <He's> like... <laughs> I would die. I would die because I'm going to watch, obviously. So I, I would oh, just yeah. die. I, I would screen record it and put it right next to Will Ferrell. And he's just, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm Ricky Bobby, and I don't know quite what to do with my hair. <laughs> well, oh, uh, another awesome episode once again. Dude, yes. that, that was a blast. We, we definitely got to get Luke on again. Uh, I would like to learn more about them, but uh, yeah. guys, go check them out on uh, social medias below. Uh, if you need your lawn mode, uh, I heard he's your guy. So uh, especially in Oklahoma, <laughs> free, give him a call. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but so. you got any last remarks for tonight, dude? Nah, man, I'm I'm excited for what we have coming in the near future. Yeah. We got some so. big podcasts, yeah. Yeah. But uh, huge thanks again to Luke. That yes, was an absolute fun night. And uh, guys, Monday night, we hope to see you on either Facebook or YouTube. That's going to be a blast. Like we said, we're going to be giving away an angler bullseye. But uh, thank you guys again for uh, for listening and watching. See you guys next time.